What's up everybody? Welcome back to Tree City Trading. My name's Wes. Today's video will be focused on how you can mine Zen Blocks with the GPU. But first, let's talk about something. Initially, when Zen Blocks was introduced, it was portrayed as a CPU only algorithm. That somehow the network would be stronger if we only mined with CPUs, and that allowed more people to participate. It seemed to lower the barrier of entry. But as we got more experience, we started learning about the blockchain it became very evident that we needed more hash power to secure the network. If we wanted the immutability and the decentralization of a real blockchain, we needed that hash power or else anybody could just spin up 51% of the power and end up rewriting blocks in the blockchain and taking everybody's blocks and super blocks. So to avoid that, we realized we needed more hash power. And what's awesome about this community is that the Zenblocks GPU miner that we're going to be reviewing today was actually created by a Zenblocks community member. And that just goes to show that there's no stopping the technology. A community member was able to create a script that mines Zenblocks with GPU. And he shared that script with the community and now everybody's GPU mining. And when more hash power enters the picture, that also means that the mining difficulty will increase. More hash power means more secure and it's more secure because it's harder for people to write blocks. And shout out to Joseph. Check out these charts that he makes. Definitely head over to zen.pub. It's an awesome website for everything zen. You can track your zen, your db zen, and now even zen blocks. So definitely go check out zen.pub. But as you can see here on the mining difficulty chart, it's basically going straight up. You can see for the first two weeks when we were only CPU mining, the difficulty never even got above 10,000. But since then, it quickly rose past 10, 20, 50,000, and it doesn't doesn't really seem like it's slowing down just yet. So as the difficulty increases, it becomes harder for individuals to get blocks because that mining power is distributed among the miners. So when GPUs enter the picture, the mining increases, and that kind of pushes the CPU guys out of the picture. Unfortunately, it's just the reality of the technology. But with that comes a new set of challenges. I spent the weekend learning about GPUs and GPU mining and how we can leverage this technology to make the network more safe, with hopes that eventually we'll have an immutable ledger where we'll be able to transfer our super blocks and Zuni blocks and Zen blocks in between each other, maybe bridge to Ethereum and have a whole ecosystem, a tradable ecosystem built on the proof of works that is Zen blocks. So as I mentioned, definitely go check out Zen.pub, but I also have a site of my own, something that I built within the last two weeks. Never thought I I'd be learning Python and HTML and JavaScript, but I came up with this little website just so we could check our wallet balances quickly. Now, if you start mining Zen blocks and Zenium, feel free to head over to hashhead.io, pop your address in there, and you should be able to see your balance. There are some weird quirks with the website. Certain stats only show for the top 500 holders. Also, sometimes the database and the RPC connections get goofed up when I pull the values. So sometimes it'll say zero. If you come down about halfway, you see that I added timestamps so you can see the last time the data was updated and the data basically scrapes the leaderboards every 15 minutes and puts it right on hash head so you can search for your individual address rather than looking through that long list so if you like my work you like the videos you like the python scripts i've been putting out if i've helped you set up your zen miner please head over to hashhead.io maybe buy me a coffee i'd really appreciate it but as always i'm happy to help anyone any and all support is definitely appreciated so let's get into it what are we doing today Today, we're gonna to go through step-by-step step how to set up a Zen GPU miner. Also down below, I'll have a link to this guide with each step that I take. Feel free to click the link below if you'd like to follow along. So before we start pushing buttons, there's a couple things that you should really be aware of. You'll wanna know a couple things before you start. You wanna know things like the version of Linux that you're gonna be running. Does it have enough RAM? Does it have enough vCPU? If you don't have enough RAM and you start mining and the miner consumes all the RAM, then your miner is gonna crash. Now your VM will stay running, so the They'll still charge you by hour, so that's something you'll want to monitor. You don't want to exceed the limits and cause the card to crash, otherwise you'll be paying for nothing. Another thing that I can't stress enough, use the resources that you have at hand. If you're typing a command and you're getting a weird error and you're not sure what that error is, simply select the text and paste it into ChatGPT or paste it into Google, paste it into ZenGPT. See what the error is and see if you can fix it yourself. A lot of times errors are caused by permissions. In IT we call this 
the user context. You have to understand the commands that you're executing and in what context you're executing them as. And that sounds way more complicated than it is. Basically, all that means is, are you running the command as an administrator or a regular user? Nearly all the people that I'm helping are trying to run commands, but they're either not setting up the executable script or they're not running as an administrator. They're trying to execute commands as a regular user and they don't have the permissions to run those commands. There's a couple ways around this. The easiest way is running as root. If you're logged into this machine, as root, you basically have super user, you have full administrative permissions to the VM, you don't need to run a sudo, you don't need to put it in a sudo session. In fact, if you do, you'll likely get an error. So here you can see I try to run a couple commands as sudo, it says command not found. That's because one, sudo is not installed, and two, I'm logged in as the root user, which is the administrator. So since I'm logged in as root, I don't need any special permissions. However, if your session's logged in as user or FM user or your name or some other user context, you may need to elevate your session to a super user and you can do that by running sudo s. But in this case, we're running as root so we don't need to change anything. So basically I'm gonna run through these commands one at a time, I'll talk about what they do and we'll see what happens when we run them. Now the guide that I'm posting will have all the commands listed as sudo, but if you're running as root, just omit the sudo. Do not type sudo. So for example, the first command says sudo apt update. I'm gonna leave the sudo out and I'm just gonna paste apt upgrade and apt upgrade y. What this does is update the package lists and the installed packages. Basically checks to see if you have the latest version of Python, the latest version of drivers. It'll run through and check each one. If it's ready to update, it'll update. And that's all that command does is just get you ready for the installation. So as I mentioned, the first half of this is basically just setting up the prerequisites. Same with the next one. The next command install git cmake make in the sudo packages we'll type apt install git cmake make in sudo you can see it starts downloading the packages automatically installs them if they're not already installed so we're good there so now that git installed successfully, we're gonna move on to our third command. This will actually clone the Zen GPU miner from the GitHub repository directly to your instance. And this is a big question we get regularly. How do I get my files onto the VM? Do I have to copy them or do I log into a browser to download them? No, you just have to run the git clone command. This is a command that's built into Linux that we just installed. It will automatically download the full repository right to your VM. And that is our third command. So I'll just paste that in there, git clone, and then the name of the GitHub, Zen GPU miner. So here you can see the command running, and I just noticed how small the font was, so I went ahead and made that bigger. But so far, we've run the apt update, we've run the apt install, we ran the git clone, the git clone clones successfully, so now we have the GitHub repository, and this is where your basic knowledge of command line comes in. All we're gonna do is open the folder. So to do that, we have to type in CD and then the folder name. Now before I hit enter, you have to notice that it is case sensitive. So Zen GPU and M are all capitalized, just like in the GitHub. So I'll hit enter here. And now you can see I'm inside the Zen GPU miner folder because now it says it here. I'm in my workspace forward slash Zen GPU miner. That Zen GPU miner folder was created when we ran the git command. To see what's inside this folder, I can type in dir. The dir command just displays everything in the directory. So moving on, we'll continue installing our prerequisites. The next command is apt git install python pip. This is how you install pip. If you wanna run pip commands, it's not inherently installed in Linux, so you have to run the command. And this is kind of interesting. When it's asking you a question, it's asking me, do I wanna continue? You'll notice that the Y is capital and the N is lowercase. This is case sensitive, so you wanna make sure if you're answering yes, use a capital Y. So it goes through, it installs the pip. Now we're able to run pip commands. Next, we can install our requirements for the minor file, and that's the pip command, pip install ur requirements.txt. And here you can see it installed the requirements, it's installed the argon2, the requests, all that fun stuff. Next, we'll install the text editor. This is how we're gonna edit our wallet address. To install the text editor, we'll type apt install nano. You'll see it downloads nano text editor. So we'll continue with our commands. The next one's the big one. We're gonna install the NVIDIA CUDA toolkit. And again, we're gonna continue, we'll hit yes. And this one takes generally a few minutes, so we'll come back once this is ready. So that took maybe three to five minutes to install, but now we have the NVIDIA CUDA toolkit installed. Next, we're gonna install the OpenCL development files. All right, and that's pretty much it for the 
prerequisites. Now we have all our prerequisites installed. We have the package downloaded. Next, we're going to have to edit some things. We're going to have to add our address to the config. We're going to have to make the build file. Before we make the build file, we have to make the script executable. And then when we execute the build file, we also have to look up and get some information about our card. The performance of the card will depend on the build file. The mining performance will depend on the number that we put in. So we want to make sure we put in the number that corresponds to our card. But first, arguably the most important step, edit your wallet file. We're going to type in nanoconfig.conf. So nano is the text editor. And when we open with that command, it opens in the text editor. Now to edit the text, you use your up and down arrow. So you can see I'm going to hit down and I'm going to hit right. And I'm going to move the cursor over to the end of the wallet address. And then I'm just going to backspace it right, right on back. Then I'm going to type in my wallet, treecitywest.eth. Make sure it's spelled right. So once we have our address entered, we have to save that file. You'll notice the menu on the bottom of the page. These are the different commands you can execute. It has the up caret and O for write out. That means control O will write the file or save the file. So if I hit control O, it asks me, what's the file name you want to write? I'm going to save it to config.conf. I'll hit enter. It saved the file. Now that I saved the file, I have to exit the nano editor. I'll hit control X for exit. And now I'm back at the command line. Just to be safe, it actually edited. I recommend going back into it and making sure your address is still there. Here you can see I went back into it. It still says treecitywest.eth and I'll go ahead and exit back. And now for the exciting part, we have to build our miner. So, so far, all we've done are the prerequisites. We installed all the prerequisites. We edited the files. Now we're ready to build the miner. To build the miner, we execute the build miner script. However, that script needs to be made executable before we can run it. And that's what the next command does. chmod plus x build.sh. This makes the script executable which means you can run it as a script rather than just a text file that ends in .sh. So we run the command ch plus x build .sh. As long as there's no error, that means the command was successful. So the next command relies on the GPU's architecture. So what I recommend is you come over to the Zen GPU miner and take a look at the documentation. If you scroll down to the readme about halfway down, at the bottom of the CUDA installation section, there is a list of the NVIDIA CUDA GPUs. This will tell you the CUDA architecture of your NVIDIA card. So go ahead and click on this. Now these are the different types of NVIDIA cards. Now if I look at the GeForce products, because I have a GeForce RTX 4090, I can see that the 4090 has a compute capability of 8.9. So that's how I'm gonna end the command to build the miner. So I'll go and paste this in here and see where it says SM86. I'm actually going to replace that with 89 because when I look at the 4090, it has a compute capability of 89. So I want to use SM89 to build my miner file. So it uses my card to the full capability. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. Now this command is one that if you have trouble building the file, I highly recommend pasting this output directly into chat GPT. If it misses a certain prerequisite, a certain file, if there's a certain permission that gets stuck on, ChatGPT will point that out to you and make it very easy for you to troubleshoot the issue. And again, running this build.sh, we're basically running a script that builds the miner using the CUDA architecture. We're using the CUDA architecture because I have an NVIDIA G GeForce card. If you have an AMD card, the process is a little different. So now you can see the process stopped. The final message is build completed successfully with CUDA Arch SM89. That means it used the SM89 architecture to build my miner file. Now I like to make sure that miner file exists. So I'm gonna type in the command dir again to show me what's in that directory. Here you can see Zen GPU miner. So now we know that file exists. Our miner's ready to go. So at this point we're done. We have the prerequisites installed. We built the miner file. Now the miner file is ready to be executed. There's a couple different ways to do this. I personally like to use a terminal multiplexer or Tmux. The advantage of using Tmux is that it allows me to see both screens at once and splits them neatly down the middle so I can see if there's any errors on either screen. So now the trick to running your miner is understanding that there's two processes that have to be running. You have to run the miner.py file and you also have to run the Zen GPU miner executable that we just built. The trick is being able to monitor both of these windows. So there's a couple different ways to do 
do this on the GitHub if you come to the quick start session. The dev actually recommends using the screen command. So you can install screen and then toggle between the new screen sessions. That's just one way to do it. I personally like to use the terminal multiplexer because I can see both screens and it only takes two commands and a couple edits. I'll include the tmux script in the guide below. So let's try that right now. The first step to using tmux is to install the software. Just like the other Linux software, we're gonna run apt install tmux. You can see it downloads the package. I do wanna continue, use the disk base. It's a very light program, it's already installed. Next, we have to create the tmux script. So we're gonna use our nano editor again. So I'll go ahead and paste nano tmux.sh. This will create a new file called tmux.sh where we'll paste our script in there. And it's also important to note that if you're running multiple GPUs, the instructions are a bit different. With these instructions, I'm running one single GeForce GPU. So I'll paste the script for a single GPU miner. Now, some things you'll want to notice about the script. Um, some versions of Linux like to run Python while others like to run Python 3. So if you get an error that it can't execute Python 3, you can come back into the script, you remove the three and you're good to go. Another thing to note here is when it's running the GPU miner, there's also a memory limit you can cap it at so it doesn't exceed the memory and crash. That's what this dash B number is. I'm actually gonna remove this. So I'm using the full memory to the highest potential and we'll see how much hash rate I can get. So once I make my changes to the nano file, I'll go ahead and hit write, file name to write tmux.sh. I'll go ahead and save it. Now that we saved our script, we'll go back. So now we installed tmux, we created the tmux script. Now we have to make the tmux script executable. It's that same command, the chmod plus x. So we'll run chmod plus x tmux.sh. No errors there, it ran the command, we're all good. And now we're ready to execute. Now this doesn't always work on the first try. Sometimes you have to go back, execute it, make a few changes, troubleshoot things. But to execute the tmux script and start the miners, we hit period, forward slash tmux dot sh. This starts the script and hopefully we see some running miners. Boom, and just like that, it works perfectly the first time. So in the top screen, you can see the miner.py is running. You'll wanna confirm that it's using your address, treecitywest.eth. Uh, in the recent update, they also added the dev fee, so I encourage everyone to turn your dev fees on. Go ahead and reward the guy that made the GPU miner, but uh, you'll just wanna watch this and make sure it's running pr properly. Some things you'll wanna note, make sure that it does list your card here. So you'll notice it says CUDA device, NVIDIA, GeForce, RTX 4090. If it says something different, like number zero, or undefined, or something else, your onboard GPU maybe, that means it's not using your actual card and you'll wanna be mindful. You may have to go back and adjust some settings, maybe update the CUDA package, maybe update your GPU drivers, but you'll wanna make sure that it does list your device name. Also, when it first starts, it's okay if it says mining zero blocks. This is actually your cumulative blocks as the miner's running. So once you get one block, this will say mining one block. Once you get two, it'll say mining two blocks. And that way, when you run, let it run overnight, you can quickly see, oh, mining 15 blocks, I mined 15 blocks overnight. That's awesome. Another thing you'll wanna be mindful of is the difficulty. You wanna make sure that your difficulty is updating. If you don't have permission to write to difficulty Dot text, you'll get an error here that says unable to write to difficulty.txt. That's when you have to be mindful of the user context. Make sure you're running as an admin. Make sure you're running the command as sudo. If you're not and you're running the commands as a regular user, then the script is not going to have the permission to update the difficulty.txt and then you won't get the blocks that you're mining. So you'll want to make sure that not only is are you seeing hashes, your hash rate's good, but also your difficulty is updating as time passes. And so that's pretty much it. You can see I'm getting some pretty good hash rate with the GeForce RTX 4090. I'm getting about 4,000 hashes per second. So that ends up being a couple hundred dollars a month, but also be mindful that this coin doesn't have any value yet. So that could be wasted money, but it's fun to learn how to do this, to learn how to mine, to learn ab about this CUDA architecture and these GPUs and how to run these scripts. It's definitely been an enlightening experience. So shout out to Jack and all the Zenians out there. If you liked the video, it helped you set up your miner. Hopefully you'll buy me a coffee. And as always, thank you for watching. Tree City Trading is out. I hope you guys stay zen.